Yeah, go ahead. On Yes. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Toner commented on Victoria Nolan's testimony on Ukraine in Congress and said, quote, it is incumbent on the Ukrainian government to also enact political economic reforms as part of its efforts to fully implement Minsk. So there's obligations, responsibilities on both sides, on all sides, but that's the way to sanctions relief, end of quote. It's been more than a year now since Minsk agreement ceasefire has largely been holding and Eastern Ukraine has been waiting for Kiev to deliver that ultimate political resolution to this conflict, which would be a constitutional reform, decentralization, local elections, all of which Kiev agreed to, but more than a year later has not delivered. So sanctions against Russia are now tied to what Kiev may or may not do. Do you think it's fair? The sanctions against uh, Russia are going to continue as long as they uh, they continue to uh, you know violate the territorial integrity of Ukraine and uh, until Minsk is implemented, that's not going to change. Uh, so you're asking me, is, is it fair? It's not about fair or not. It's about keeping those sanctions in place and keeping that pressure on uh, and, and until Russia is in full compliance with its obligations. And we've long said, only Russia. We, we've long said that we. Uh, believe that Ukraine still has work to do on the political reform front. And uh, I can assure you that we continue to press that case. Uh, Ukraine, too, has obligations under this agreement. So I, I, according to the State Department, the sanctions relief depends on the full implementation of the Minsk agreement. So if Kiev is not doing its part and Minsk agreements are not fully implemented, do you punish Russia? Is that The costs of sanctions that are being applied to Russia are are specifically tied to Russia's actions in Ukraine. Um, and Russia is not in full compliance of the Minsk agreement. And as Assistant Secretary Newland said, that we're going to keep those sanctions in place um, until they are. Um, now, we believe that the government of Ukraine can carry out the reforms and implement Minsk. And we recognize it's not fully implemented. Uh, it's the joint responsibility of Ukraine's president, prime minister, and all those in government and in Parliament to put aside their differences and deliver on the reforms that Ukrainians themselves demand. And we believe they will do so, and we will continue uh, to monitor this and press that case uh, as aggressively as we have. The, the fact is, may I just, uh, one more, the fact is that the ceasefire had been holding, but now as Secretary, under Assistant Secretary Nuland uh, said, uh, but today things are heating up again. Are you surprised that things are heating up again, considering Kiev has not delivered on the key it's not political about solution it's not about that surprise. would uh, – that, that Ukraine needs to finally settle this conflict? It, it's not about surprise. We're certainly not happy to see this. It, it, sadly, it's not the first time uh, that we have seen uh, uh, Minsk not be fully implemented uh, and violations occur. Uh, and again. Uh, nothing's changed about what we want to see happen or the case that we're going to continue to press uh, uh, on political reforms in, in Ukraine, which we believe they can do, uh, or on Russia's obligations to meet their obligations under Minsk as well. We're going to continue to, to press those cases as we have in the past. But do you agree, one more, that, one more. Do you agree that Kiev has uh, not I've, delivered I've, that I've, I've gone through this with you a couple of times now. Solution. We're going to go – we're going to move that, on now because I have answered this question now I think three times. Go ahead.